Hey everybody, it's Coach Quinlan, and right now I'm going to cover some static holds for you. There's a lot of them, so pay attention. I'm going to be brief though, because a lot of them, uh, the, the, key, the key aspects are the same, okay? So we'll start off with the forearm plank and the forearm side plank. So, first thing you want to do, find some nice level ground. I don't mind the hardwood. You might want a mat. All right, bam. So I'm going to use my forearm. All right, as far as my arm between my wrist and my elbow, bam. And I'm going to put these bad boys on the ground, or bad people on the ground. Bam, right here. Then I want to make sure my toes are firmly planted. All right, I like to put my feet together on this. Now head, some folks look straight down, some people like to look up. I personally look up. From here, I'm going to lift my hips off the ground. And maintain. Alignment from my shoulders to my hips to my ankles. Now I want to keep that all in a straight line. What do I mean by that? Well, don't bend your knees. Don't put your butt up in the air. Don't put your butt on the ground. Or your hips on the ground. Okay. Don't put your face on the ground. Okay, keep everything in alignment. Now, hand position. I don't care if you put your hands on the ground, you make a fist. Doesn't matter. As long as you're in proper alignment, your core, not just your abs, but anywhere where your leg intersects and your hip, your arms, right, your torso, all those stabilizing muscles get a heck of a workout. Okay, now for the side plank, you can do it a bunch of different ways, I know, I know. This is just how I like to do it. Bam. Find that elbow and shoulder up, hand, I don't care if it's a fist. And then I like to scrape my lower leg first. So we're already in that start position. Now, all you do is stack my top leg. Now, you can put your arm up, put your arm. Doesn't matter. I see a lot of folks like to do this. That's cool too. You can do whatever you want. Now, same thing. I want to keep my hips. This one, if I put my hips really high, I'm still engaging my obliques. So when I drop it down, So, nine turtle starts on your back, very similar to the beginning of a sit-up. Now, what you're going to do is engage your abdominals the same way you do for a crunch. That's going to bring me up like so. Then I'm going to lift one leg up, lift the other leg out, and open up my arms. Maintaining this tension. So, if you've ever seen a cartoon or National Geographic, or if you've ever never seen one in person, put a turtle on their back, looks pretty pathetic, pretty helpless. Alright? Make sure you keep that tension on those abs. The further you open up, the more resistance weight is created on there. You can spice this up, put on ankle and wrist weights, anything like that, but now, don't worry about doing it for hours on end. Worry about doing it correct for hours on end. So if I crunch up and I open up, notice my chin stuck. Once I start to go like so, the tension unravels, uh, uh, it's time to stop. So once any part of that, whether it's your arms, your legs, your chin, your abdominals, whatever something goes, you're done, take a break, wash, rinse, and repeat. Now, Superman is, or Skydiver, sorry, 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 Skydiver, is the opposite. So I'm going to lay down in my belly, arms out, legs, doesn't matter, I usually do them about shoulder width on this one. And I'm going to engage my low back and my glutes, alright? So what's going to happen is when I engage my glutes, that's going to lift my legs off the ground. Alright, I'm not using my legs, I'm just flexing my behind. There they go. Now from here, I'm going to lift my chest off the ground, and how do I do that? I engage my little back. When I go up, I'm essentially on my abdominals, 
using my low back and my rump to lift me up. Now I can put my arms out. If I look like Superman and do all that, that's cool too. So boom, it doesn't matter really what you're doing, as long as you're off the ground. I mean, you can even pretend like you're swimming, if that's what you want to do, as long as you keep all that off the ground. So however you spice it up, make sure that the bear recipe is the same, all right? Thighs off the ground and chest off the ground. Now, let's check my notebook. All right, I'm gonna go with a standing knee raise. So, or just like here in line, good posture, head up, hands at the side, and I'm gonna lift my knee up to 90 degrees. If you wanna go higher, that's cool too. But 90, ooh, 90 degrees is where we're talking. But before you all start laughing, you try to talk and do this stuff. All right, bam. Square up with it, posture. Now the hard part about this is keeping attention and breathing. So remember, I have to breathe behind tight muscles. No matter how high I'm bringing it up. And when I switch, I want you all to set the foot down, shift that weight over. So, I mean, common errors with this one are you're not doing it right. I mean, it's, you're either in alignment or you're not. I don't know. It's different for everybody. You have a weak ankle, a weak knee, an unseasoned hip. I don't, I don't know. There's too many things that can go wrong. But the minute you start to weeble wobble, stop bringing your leg up. All right? It's not about getting right up here all right? and doing all that stuff. It's about, oh, finding out where you're at. Even if it's right here, totally cool. At one point, that's where I was. So, as long as you can maintain posture, you keep bringing it up. Once you start to weevil wobble, lean forward or backwards, whoosh, hang it. Now, the wall sit involves a wall and me pretending like I'm sitting. All right? So, I don't want to get right on it because when I go to sit, it's going to push my butt. My butt's going to go back and it's going to knock me forward. So, what I like to do is I put my shoulder blades on the wall and then I walk my feet up until my knees are bent 90 degrees. And then I always want a motorcycle, but Mrs. Clinton won't let me have one. So, that's how I pass the time. These can be very painful in a good way if you do them correctly. They can also be very therapeutic and help you focus on your breath. All right? So while I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. So how do I match my breath with this? You don't match your breath. What you do is you try to just breathe nice and deep. Okay? So while I'm here, In theory, this eases the pain. I don't think it really eases the pain. I think it gives you something else to think about. And that's a wall sit. And that's a, that's a heck of a hole, believe it or not. That one starts to hurt uh, right away. So, as I am, all right. So we have hip bridges and then plank and side plank. And this is what we have done. So, break right. All right. So, hip bridge. It looks a lot like the start of a sit up. So, I'm right here. The one thing I want to stress is that you don't put your feet together. Get comfortable on this one. So, bring your feet in close, but they don't have to be right up next to your glutes. Just get your feet like this, shoulder width. I'm going to drive my hips up to the sky. Keeping my hips up are my glutes. So this is a really great, really fantastic exercise to strengthen the back side, but also just to help with muscle imbalances along the way too. Sometimes a lot of us tend to squat 
but we don't really focus on our hamstrings or our glutes even though they do get touched by doing the squat. Tends to be an overdevelopment of the thigh. So this is a good way to get some nice easy work in on the hamstrings and the glutes. Alright, so once again, common errors. There's, it's more based on you not being comfortable. So if you put your feet together and do a hip bridge, probably not going to go very good. Alright? Biggest thing is just find what's comfortable for you. Make sure that you can press up. Keep those hips up in the air. And don't, when we're doing hip bridges, folks, please, please stop with all this. I mean, there's other folks that can do it too, but we need to stick with the script, okay? So hip bridges are not bridges that we're used to in gymnastics and things like that. All right, and in terms of the planks, the plank, is just a push-up position. So, bam. Hands about shoulder width. Bam. From the side. Now, the hand and shoulder should pretty much be in line. Bam. Keeping everything tight. Okay? People will tell you, uh, pull your belly button into your spine. Others will tell you, flex. People will tell you to squeeze your butt and all that. All right, I put my hands on the ground, I put my feet back, and then I just squeeze my glutes. Okay, much the same way as I would be standing with my arms in front of me. So just think of that. Bam, bam. And once again, common errors, breaking that hip alignment. Or, they're doing it right, but those hands are kind of funky. And then they do the magical bang. I don't know what's happening. Bangs. I don't know why this keeps happening. But then when you get that correct, bam. Hands and shoulders not aligned. Now, side plank with that straight arm. A little bit tougher on that shoulder, I'll be honest. So when I put that heel of the palm down, I rock, make sure that shoulder's over it. But I also make sure my wrist isn't tight, so before you get going, make sure you roll those wrists out once or twice. Post over it. Straighten that bottom leg. Straight hips. Bam. Put the hand up. Boom. Bam, there I am. Now from the side, same thing. Hand on the ground. Straighten the hip. Common errors for all these planks, breaking the hip, breaking the hip, letting it dip. Those are the only ways to really go wrong uh, in the full planks. I mean, if your arm goes out, you're going to plant. That's the other thing. So if you have an issue with your shoulder giving out, go back down and work on the forearms. But other than that, it's all pretty simple for the planks. Make sure those hips are in alignment and those shoulders and the hands are lined up. Adios, muchachos.